the fact that she was doing something any of us would have done in terms of the care she took to transfer this small amount of material was for all of us the wake up call, the signal event that says whenever confronted with a material known to be toxic at whatever level, whether super toxic as this one was or not, we must be diligent, learn all we can from as many experts as we can about the nature of the hazard and about the protections that can be taken to handle it safely. In August 1996, acclaimed professor Karen Wetterhahn was conducting research on the biological impacts of heavy metals in her lab at Dartmouth College. She was working with small amounts of a highly toxic compound called dimethylmercury. She used a mechanical pipetting device to transfer the liquid compound while wearing latex rubber gloves. During this process, she later told colleagues, one or two drops landed on her gloved left hand. Dr. John Wynn is a professor of chemistry at Dartmouth College, where he has worked for almost 30 years. At the time of Karen Wetterhahn's accident, he was chair of the chemistry department. She was not aware that she was in any peril at the time. She cleaned up the accident, disposed of her gloves properly. Everything had been carried out in a uh, appropriate fume hood in her laboratory, and that was that. The, the spill was not considered by her significant enough to report. She was in no danger as far as she knew. At the time, Professor Wynne said, no one in the department knew that dimethylmercury could seep through the latex rubber gloves worn by Professor Wetteron. But five months later, in January 1997, she began to show serious neurologic symptoms as her balance, gait, and speech deteriorated rapidly. Despite medical treatment for heavy metal poisoning, three weeks later, she became unresponsive and died in June 1997, 10 months after the accident. I think we were all stunned, not only that it was Karen, a very careful and, and capable researcher, but to find that such a seemingly innocuous event could have led to what ultimately was Karen's death was just Un unimaginably shocking. According to Dartmouth officials, Professor Wetterhahn had consulted the material safety data sheet for dimethylmercury, which advised the use of latex rubber gloves when handling the material. Professor Wynne says the tragedy led the university to emphasize the need for comprehensive hazard evaluations, rather than relying exclusively on the safety precautions from chemical suppliers. There was an increase in that sort of uh, safety instruction in the sense that it expanded into things that we had not realized required such care and detail, mm -hmm. such as glove material. The fact that she was doing something any of us would have done in terms of the care she took to transfer this small amount of material was, for all of us, the wake-up call, the signal event that says, whenever confronted with a material known to be toxic at whatever level, whether super toxic as this one was or not, we must be diligent, learn all we can from as many experts as we can about the nature of the hazard and about the protections that can be taken to handle it safely. University research is a large and highly competitive enterprise. The CSB estimates there are over 110,000 graduate students and postdoctoral researchers working in academic laboratories across the U.S. Government agencies and private organizations spend billions of dollars sponsoring research at university labs. Academic institutions, principal investigators, and lab workers face significant pressures to innovate, achieve, and gain funding and recognition for their work. Research conducted at university laboratories is often on the forefront of technology and innovation. It is important that this research continues and thrives. 
but it must be done within a strong safety culture where preventing hazards is an important value.